welcome everyone. Thank you for joining one the, the Zoom, but also to signing up on Zoogler.co. Um, my name is Chris Fong. I have the opportunity to uh, share more about how to take advantage of the Zoogler coming and lean into it and maybe even offer your assistance to everyone else uh, over the next uh, um, few minutes. Uh, Nate is this awesome uh, Zoogler as well. He, he was impacted himself earlier this year and stepped right in and really was helping welcoming everyone and uh, without uh, community leaders like him, uh, the company wouldn't be running, and so I'm very thankful for Nate for not only jumping on this call, he created the deck. I'll get him to walk you through it, to walk him through it afterwards, but um, you can also ping him directly on Slack. So I'll give my own personal intro and then to perhaps uh, share a few tips of how you can uh, perhaps um, lean into this community. So, so I was in the Google New York office from 2006 to uh, 2013, and 2013 moved over to Mountain View. I'm darling, I left Google in 2015 to do my own startup. and the thing that really worked out well was this community. I was in sales and then also in partnerships. And a partnerships role I was working in was to work with venture capital firms and startups, Project Samuel, across the different Google product areas where, where my role was internally meet everyone in cloud, in play, in Nest, in Chrome, whatever the product there is, and present the opportunity to some of the high-flying startups. So think about what would be the next Pinterest before Pinterest uh, was a really large company. And, Google would have a harder time uh, working with them. So we worked with through the top VC firms, Sequoia and Tristan Horowitz, to partner with them to understand what they perhaps need for the portfolio and for our own analysis. We started working with some of the portfolio companies. And one of my favorite ones, and one of the ones we really had a lot of inroads with was uh, MyFitnessPal, that a uh, VC firm, Kleiner Perkins, and Excel introduced us to them. And they had uh, 22 line items of things that they did with Google. And so it was really fun to try to do that. And, when I left to do my own startup, I realized how helpful people were to startups. So I had a community of people who were VCs, Zooglers, and Googlers, and also founders to, to get together and doing a lot of meetups. Some of the meetups turned into actually a demo day that we did at Google's office, and that was in 2016. One of the startups had, uh, that we presented had sold his first company to Google, that became Google Lens. So you open your phone, it's Google Lens for Android, and also uh, the Google app on, on the iPhone. And so we invested in that company via an investment syndicate. Uh, we had formed an angel list. And fast forward a few years, uh, the investment syndicate and a couple of small micro VC funds uh, have invested in over 100 uh, startups that a lot of ex-Googlers have started. But again, we've gone beyond uh, helping founders and people who want to do startups. And especially since uh, the layoffs uh, earlier this year, we uh, actually done a lot of non-entrepreneurial type of activities and programs and events that are not necessarily targeted for founders for many years already. It's volunteer leaders who actually take uh, uh, the, the lead to say they want to start a chapter, whether it's a location-based, interest-based, topical-based, and run it on a regular basis every month, every quarter. A lot of these uh, company meetups get added to the monthly Zoom newsletter. But what happened in, in January, again, for those who have impacted more recently, really sorry about uh, the, the sudden nature of that. I did hear some stories of how uh, perhaps it wasn't uh, handled the best way, and earlier this year clearly wasn't as well, but really feel for you, but you have our communities to support you. So earlier this year, before the, the layoffs, we had 13,800 members who signed up on Zoom with Co. Uh, by um, two months later, we had 28,000 members. So you can imagine a lot of the systems we had, uh, Slack included, uh, broken. If you notice on Slack, there's actually only the messages that allows where every 10,000 messages or three months, uh, the old messages disappear. And for those who don't know, it's because it's a free product. The paid product is about $7 per user. So if there's 1,000 people per month, uh, as you can imagine, we can't uh, afford that uh, being a community run organization. But uh, over the past couple of months, uh, Kushagar, myself, and a few others have started thinking, can we actually support the community in a deeper fashion and building new tools? So I'm building a new startup with Kushagar to actually build better tools for this community and hopefully others. And, uh, I personally had someone reach out to me uh, earlier this year who was a nine-year Google, Google veteran engineer based out of San Jose. And even though uh, there was an EAP support program, and as you can imagine, the package he got, um, he didn't feel that uh, he could get through that particular time. And that really motivated us to say that oh, we clearly want to make sure that ex-Google community is well supported, but kind of it seemed kind of selfish to us to so only focus on ex-Googlers. So that's why we decided to launch that uh, initiative. And so you can hear more about it. We, it's called in Blueprint. And, Post about it many places already, but that's why I, I, it's time to, to work on that too. But uh, we wouldn't be able to do what we do with that and also without a strong Zoogler community. So 
I'll, 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 I'll say one more thing now, I'll pass it over to uh, so Nate. Nate, I'm not sure whether you want to pull up the slides or whether you prefer if I do to walk through how to make use of Slack. But um, for me, the way I see the community is it's your community. It's not my community, it's not Nate's community. What you, you get out what you put into it, whether it's just checking it regularly on Slack and perhaps RSVPing uh, on some of the events. And we do put it on the Slack, which is a monthly newsletter where we drive and put a lot of uh, the events. Um, and it's up to you how you want to perhaps participate, whether it's just reading in it, uh, attending events, or even taking a stab at organizing some events for yourself, what interest groups you have, uh, whether it's also on the regional level where it, perhaps there's no regional meetups, you want to meet other Zooglers over there. And I think over the next uh, few weeks, Nate and I will keep doing some of these uh, new member onboarding sessions and try to make it a bit more easy, easier for all of you to meet each other. So that's one way to get involved in that. But I think part of it is also we're trying to Help people look for roles and new opportunities. Daniel, who's based in Europe, uh, has been a Zugo lead for the past seven years. He's uh, leading up a Zugo talent initiative. So hopefully over the next few weeks, uh, you'll hear more about how we perhaps could help all of you uh, learn more about job hunting opportunities and some of those who are looking for jobs. And uh, the last thing is we are very welcome to hear feedback from any of you. So feel free to ping me on Slack and send an email as well. And um, we try to get more resources as much as possible. If not, I could ask, hey, would you mind helping? some initiatives, but um, don't hesitate to message us and ask any questions. And I'm sure there'll be plenty more, I would say, but uh, let me turn it over to Nate. And Nate, thanks so much for your leadership of the past few months and onboarding everyone and everything that you do. Nate, uh, why don't you go ahead for now? Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, share my screen. Give me just a moment. Um, so I'm going to ping everybody the full deck that uh, that everybody gets from me on Slack. Uh, but what I'm also going to do today is just share a more abridged version of that, um, just to make sure that we keep to time and you can actually look at the full deck uh, on your own time. So let me go ahead and share. Let's see. And then let me know if you can see my screen. I'm going to put it in prisoner mode or uh, there we go. All right. Everybody good? Can we see it? All right. So the TLDR on the Zuger.co Slack space. Um, so I guess the first thing to really say about it is, um, and Chris, you're going to love me for this. Most importantly, you know, because this space is really for the ex, you know, uh, Google folks, um, you know, and things really, you know, people are going through some interesting, uh, like, I'd say like ups and downs in that space, either if they left Google on their own or due to the, you know, uh, layoffs, you know, they're going through some things, even in terms of founding their own companies, you know, for the first time. And so we want to make sure that that space stays you know, psychologically safe, you know, for all people. And so we want to make sure that Chris has a chance to, you know, to verify who joined that Slack space because um, we haven't disabled the auto add feature in Slack. So definitely make sure that you wait until it's so like, let's say that, you know, someone who was impacted or someone who is a former, you know, a uh, Googler, um, like, and they want, you know, to join the, uh, you know, the Slack space, tell them to go to, you know, to Zuber.co first, fill out that form there. And then Chris will verify them so that we can make sure that they were a part of the, you know, a uh, Google family so that we can then, you know, again, keep that space safe for, you know, for all people there. Uh, especially just because like I will say that when, you know, the layoffs first hit, um, you know, um, a couple of months ago, and this still happens now, you know, people share some really vulnerable things until so we really just want to make sure that that space still stays safe, you know, for everybody. Uh, so that is why we really do, you know, encourage that you don't, don't uh, like that you wait until Chris verifies people and not auto add at them. Um, all right. So five key things to keep in mind about the Slack. Um, so I know that we all, okay, so first point is based on the fact that we all have our own different comms tools, right? We've got LinkedIn, we've got Facebook in some cases, um, you know, other different channels that, you know, we all all use. And so it's very, it's, it, you know, so it's, it, it's, it's, it's sort of easy to let your Slack time, you know, slip further, you know, like and further down that list. But I encourage you not to because there's, because there's actually a lot of cool things that actually do go on in that space. Space. And so if you, so I say it it's like, you know, so if you can try to check it at least one to two times a week. Um, and, you know, and so that's what point two is about, but really, you know, especially your, you know, um, your favorite channels. Um, so what I do is I budget time. I do it every day, but, you know, you can do it maybe once or twice a week just to make sure, you know, that you don't lose track of what is going on there. 
Um, point number two, I would say that the most important channels to keep in mind are, you know, is that first one that, you know, that you join where we're like, we're like in which everybody does um, their self like introductions. Um, that channel I like because I always get to see who, like who else is coming like into the fold uh, because you'd be surprised actually, you know, the kinds of people who were pass, passing through and you're like, oh, we need to talk, you know? And so definitely keep a watch on, you know, on that one. Um, and the next two are the general and the um, like announcements channel. Those are really key because not all of the like events that do go on, I'd say in the collective, are actually like announced every week in like in the um in the in the um the uh the email that Chris sends out. People spontaneously will do things. And so that is also where they will post those things. And so definitely keep track of those two channels there. Um so those are the main three that I focus on. Also I will say um there are a number of new companies coming up right you know uh right uh right now so i kind of think of this as there are two job markets there is the job market that is currently being posted and there are the, like like and then there are the companies that are coming up now that actually probably will have jobs coming up very very soon it's easier to i would say get those if you start making contacts with them now so founders will post a lot about things make sure that you are making those ties with the founders if you hear about things that you probably like you know like you know, like let, you know let's say that you know that they are doing um you know feel free to like pitch in with some of you know your expertise you know or something because those actually can lead to a connection for you uh so that is um going on with point uh three actually which is anyone in the slack space i'd say that this is the most friendly like this is the most you know a uh, friendly group that i've ever seen um where you can dm anybody at all i do this all of the time and so definitely feel free to do that because you don't always care to post like a response in a channel you may just want to actually talk to that person and i would say that people are open to that more than i have seen in any other space um, but I'll say that if they don't, you know, get back to you, because some people are not the best at checking Slack, go to their other channels too, like LinkedIn, or like everything else, and find them there and let them know that you've sent them something on Slack, and they will usually, you know, get back to you soon. Um, another thing is your, you know, location-based channel. Those are really important, uh, because there are, that is where people tend to talk about tons of in-person like events going on at the same time and those are spontaneous as well and so i would definitely stay uh you know stay plugged into that um and then the full deck that i give it and i've been like and i'll ping that full deck here in just a second um that tells you how to find those in the slack um you know space uh, and then the last one is that if you're ever confused about anything at all that's linked to Slack or where your post might want to go, um, feel free to DM me and I will definitely give you some pointers on, you know, on where you might want to place a certain post. All right. And just to wrap everything up, um, this is the, uh, let me actually go ahead and ping this to, you know, to everybody now. This, if you haven't seen it, this is the full deck that you get from me. Um, for some reason, I cannot ping it now, but I will ping it uh, in just a mo moment. Um, and if you have any ideas for how we can improve the Slack space, it's always under, you know, construction. We learn things all the time. Definitely DM Chris, you know, or, um, you know, Chris or me or Brian, and we will definitely, um, you know, take that into, into account to make sure that the space is evolving in a way that is helpful for all of you. Uh, so that's all that I have. If you have any questions, uh, I am here and I can also, uh, here is the link to the full on deck of how to best the Slack space. I just put that in the chat. So thanks everybody. Sure, go ahead. There are any um, Slack threads, I don't know what they're actually called, but like the hashtag, I know I can follow the threads that are specific to recruiting instead of like inundating, because I know a lot of folks at Google, like we're a percentage of broader Google. Do you know, I'm not familiar with Slack, so I'm just curious off top of mind, there are any like hashtags I should be looking for? <laughs> um, in terms of specific, func uh, so like, let's say like um, specific job functions that were impacted or specific functions that you want to connect with. Yeah, so like talent acquisition, just to um, connect, because if I have leads on roles, would you put them in the broader general space or are there sub 
plot. That's a good question. So those typically go in the, um, so there's a thread for jobs. Uh, there are actually two threads um, for, for jobs. And one is for, you know, the US and one is for, I think, um, APAC. And also there's one for um, like EMEA as, blah, 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 like as well. So those are, you know, like our three places there that, um, that those tend to also go. But people also will, um, they'll duplicate posts. And so, I, and so it could go there. It could also go in um, other places where I've seen people put this is like in the, you know, uh, layoffs channels too. And so there are many places. So if you have questions about where you want to duplicate that post, definitely feel free to DM me as well. But yeah, definitely there are three channels set up uh, for general job searches for people to paste that information there or post it there. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions? It's a fun space. And if not, I'm sure that, that you'll have questions as you get deeper into the Slack itself. Yeah, maybe this is a good time where I can actually run through this very briefly. Um, when we add people to Slack, you only get more or less like three channels, I believe, where it's general, announcement, and something else. If you go to channels, you can go to manager channels, and you can browse channels. This is where you can add yourself and see all the 234 channels over there. So that's the topical um, and all these different other areas. So just join the channels where it's probably that's most relevant. The smaller channels may have very little content. Sometimes it's zero content, but as I mentioned earlier, um, just because of the free plan, up to 10,000 messages in three months, everything is wiped. So even if there is no content in there, it may may not be dead. <laughs> we have some people who who may actually post more things in there. What we actually uh, try to encourage, uh, there's no easy way right now. Is as uh, Nate was saying, announcements is where it's sort of a free for all where people can put their announcements. And if you can't find anything specific, uh, feel free to mention there or ask for that. Generally, we try to make it more specific. Where it's Nate, myself, uh, Brian, and a couple of other people. Because what we found in the past is someone would say that, look, I love seeing, reading all the messages, but some of the admin uh, posts about it, joining an event that's run by us or some of the more other important announcements, they get lost. So I think that's where we use announcements. Anyone can just free for general, a few people can, can post there, but can actually respond to onto the general channel too. But again, if there's other uh, channels that needs to be created or you don't know where to post it, uh, feel free to uh, message Nate as well. Over time, we're happy to look at consolidating things or expanding things as well. Yeah, and just to add on that, so in that deck that I just pinged, um, it actually tells you what the different naming things are. So that's how you can find like what the I stand, you know, uh, stands for, like like what the L is for or the A, because we actually renamed channels um, a couple of months ago. And so that is how, if you're looking for like information channels, like let's say, um, you know, uh, with I or me or like interest channels, that is what that I refers to. And so that deck goes through like what the different, like what the prefix is so that you'll know which ones that you may want to, you know, want to actually join. And if channels are dead, I like to say that there's no reason why you can't restart those, you know, discussions too. I've done this a lot. And so, you know, definitely, Definitely do not be shy. Feel free to, you know, resurrect channels if you so feel moved to. And, and that, for those who are, who are job hunting right now, or even trying to learn about other areas to potentially pursue, I've seen other Zooglers who, let's say, for example, right, uh, Karen here is looking for an ML engineer in Switzerland, but maybe you want to know what that is flows about. Feel free to message her directly and say, look, um, I'm not an engineer, but I'm interested in this space. I'm exploring other topics, are you open for a conversation to actually for me to learn about it? And you can give, provide Karen the background to your question. But I know specifically some people who may not be engineers who network their way into jobs based on that, um, based on just talking to people as you can imagine, uh, uh, even in a, a Zoogler, you've been verified by Google. Um, just uh, be nice about uh, reaching out these people, but a lot of these people who may be post my jobs that they have, they also know other people who are looking for other uh, roles and opportunities. So don't hesitate if you do have the time, um, do a bit of research on what companies are perhaps uh, posting about that, who the person's posting, and network like you would, right? We know that clearly uh, post the pandemic, there's less in person network opportunities sometimes. And perhaps some, all of you are all over the world, and also some of these hiring managers are all over the world too. But uh, use this as an opportunity to go through this as a fairly uh, uh, robust uh, posting situation, right? Over here. Um, and also, as you can imagine, to introduce yourself as well. And 
you may start thinking, sometimes, as you can imagine, you make a lot of good friends at Google, right? So if users of Opportunity Invader perhaps make new friends, and it's not just about the job hunting opportunities, um, go and perhaps read their background, you can make a comment or an emoji there, or just uh, write something nice about them, or write, write something nice that you perhaps uh, can relate to that, or add them on LinkedIn directly as well. Um, this is your community, right? Uh, use it as, as, as you see fit. Um, don't hesitate to uh, put anything here on announcements, but on directly message to people, engage it, uh, the more, as I said, uh, you engage with it, the more of, uh, you will get out of it. So, Nate, anything you want to add there in terms of uh, messaging different people and uh, not being afraid of yeah. doing that? Yeah, I also one other thing too about that, because I'm known for coming up with ideas about things every five seconds, apparently. Um, and so what I've done is that like is I've also just posted things in like announcements or like in general, in some case, where like in some cases where I'll be like, hey, like I'm thinking about like an event that is focused on the or like on the, you know, uh mental well being uh first time, you know, uh founders. Anybody want to care to join me, you know. In organizing something around this and you'd be surprised how people actually will start to form a discussion around this which actually can lead to like an offline for like event or like as well too and so I, I would say if you have any kind of ideas of things that you also may want you know to organize that you see that the, we're like that we could be doing but we currently you know are not doing um, I like to say, just like Chris said, this is your space too. And so definitely feel free to use that space to, you know, try out some ideas, um, you know, to organize people because you can create, you know, um, activities as well. And so definitely I've used the space for a lot of that and made a lot of good, you know, connections based off of that, based on just things that I was curious about for just that time being. Uh, and so I would say definitely, um, you know, again, if you have ideas that come to you, and you are looking for people to co-organize those ideas, it, this is the place for that also. Yeah. Look at it, right? We're 25,400 plus people. So what an amazing group of people. So uh, feel free to keep back to this. Uh, it's a safe space. And um, if anyone's harassing you for whatever reason, or you think it's inappropriate behavior, one, we do have community guidelines um, that uh, it's posted in our Zoogla newsletter every time we send it up. And two, you can just chat to myself uh, privately as well. We can do our best to, to handle those situations. Oh, Chris, I don't know if there's time, but if you, but if you want to speak briefly about if you want to organize an event under the Zugra.co banner, um, the, like sure. the Google process that you have for that? Absolutely. Uh, before I go there, any questions on Slack at all before we move forward to other events? You know, speak up or raise your hand. And if not, I'm always here. <laughs> here we go. Constantine, let's go. How can we help answer? Hey, just a quick one. Uh, I'm assuming it sounds like invites uh, to the Slack space have already gone out. And I'm just wondering if uh, I should be looking for that somewhere or if it's going out today and this is like the warm up. Yeah, it should have gone out already to you if you've received this. So um, why don't you send me an email? Or why don't you message me an email here and I can just search for, search for you? And if not, I'll just add you directly. As well, um, the process is people sign up on Zoogla.co, but after they sign up, uh, we review it and then get added to this. Sometimes people do find these forms that we also push out to actually sign up to these specific events, and they didn't go through that process. So sometimes that there are those uh, situations, but generally, everyone who has signed up on Zoogla.co get it. But uh, feel free to send it, message me an email here, and I'll go look for it. All right, so why don't we look at Substack? Uh, this is where all the newsletters get, um, get sent. And anytime you can just go to zoogler.substack.com, you can see all our past newsletters. The way I've uh, sort of sourced this is essentially try to get as much content from the community and global leaders as possible. Um, we do have some top stories who are hiring to build this, make it um, essentially more robust. New women series, career series is just launched. Um, Catherine's doing that. Um, as I mentioned at the start, we're trying to help folks impacted from all the other tech alumni communities too. And the events, uh, we've been looking at how we can make it as easy as possible for folks to browse, right? Where a uh, laptop means it's an online event. Uh, that's sort of the Golden Gate Bridge, if you can see it behind the fog. Uh, that means the San Francisco Bay Area event. Uh, briefcase is sort of a talent uh, job related one. New memo boarding, that's what we're here. This is a specific Palo Alto one. Fireside chat, I didn't put the, um, the laptop, but it's a fireside chat here with, with Laszlo uh, tomorrow. If you haven't RSVP, please make sure you do. We've over 
500 RSVPs as well, as there should be a robust uh, conversation to them specifically focus on how to uh, job hunt and how to actually look at the uh, current recruiting environment and during this fireside chat. Um, and great story, Mark actually was uh, impacted by the layoffs uh, early this year uh, through his own networking, his own best practices, knowing people to tell and Google, hey, you got rehired uh, at YouTube. And so he's going to talk about his own own path and hopefully there'll be some learnings for folks who are looking for new jobs over there. Uh, personal finance, um, all of you or most of you may have been part of the uh, financial planning um, email alias at Google, one of the most popular ones. And we've started this weekly series and this is a pretty interesting one. Chris Hutchins has uh, sort of uh, packed his way into all these different uh, points accumulation systems and how you can in life without doing too much more. Uh, so join that if you want to know how to uh, save money and perhaps uh, have a higher quality of life through that as well. Uh, so these are all the different events. I won't go through it one by one, but you can see there's all the different topical ones. And um, as I see in perhaps you ask for specific events, we can also uh, have you be an organizer, have you suggest other speakers. Sometimes I would ask, like, why don't you ask on the announcements channel uh, whether there's any interest. Sometimes there's only five to 10 people have interest. I may not uh, actually uh, launch a event like this, but um, the, the usual way of how we are actually organizing events, which would be will change in the next uh, few weeks, is um, one: if you have an event and are interested in organizing, um, you have uh, absolute uh, uh, incentive and also the right to organize something. Uh, what we ask you to do is uh, use a particular template um, to follow the style in terms of verifying that they at Google, the details that are there, um, the background of speakers. Um, we try to send this email newsletter up, uh, once a month. We've been trying to perhaps do it twice a month, uh, just with a lot of uh, new members coming in and a lot of uh, events coming coming up. And we put it in these newsletters. It can either be an online event or it can be a regional event. Uh, we try to do uh, events all, for all around the world. If you haven't already seen the uh, YouTube channel, just go on YouTube and just go Google Zoogla or Zoogla CEO. You can see a lot of our, our great content from the past. Um, things about how folks are looking to uh, chat to different individuals and something about the Slack, which I already had mentioned, and some of these are the Bay Area events and online global events. What I've started doing, not only for the UK and other locations, is there are a lot of people who may not have the time to organize events and or get it in a newsletter within the deadlines, but I sort of put some uh, sort of leads that you can sort of self-organize. And what I can do is also start kicking off an email thread with people in these regions. So, if you're in some other regions, we can also put it in there. And over a week after the newsletter is sent out, we can send a group email where all of you can self organize and perhaps add the regular series of events in the next uh, uh, next newsletter. And we also start having some talent related initiatives there too. Um, cool. Any questions about the newsletter or events? Monthly only, right? Uh, we try to do monthly. Um, we've been trying to see the last one was actually perhaps two, three weeks ago. So it should actually be monthly. Uh, but there, there is another of a newsletter we, we try to start where there's a lot of great content on the Slack that isn't distributed out to a lot of people. Like people ask questions, people post about jobs. Um, so when we start actually a separate newsletter, just summarizing what's actually in the, in the, um, in the Slack as well. So. Uh, but it's everything's consolidated on zoogla.co, zoogla.substack.com. So you can always check on that and uh, to always be on top of different events and programs, just check this all different events too. Uh, sometimes they also post in Slack if it's not, uh, if, if there's no time to advertise in, in this too. Uh, we will have a calendar and everything else. So we are working on other ways to improve uh, the usability of uh, the events and everything else too. I'll say another thing about Slack and this as well, too, is Chris, you are really good at this. I'm trying to get better at this. Um, is that usually on the day of or Chris, you'll actually do this even like like an hour prior to you will actually send like a reminder Slack to actually let folks know when it, like when like an event is about to start. Because um, sometimes as I like, guess we all know life goes on and we kind of forget about things. And so definitely check the Slack as well, too, because there are reminders that I'll be like, oh, this event is happening like an hour from now. I happen to be free or I forgot about that event. And so definitely uh, keep a watch on the Slack because you 
do get these kind of reminders that do let, let you know when things are happening on the day of hour before, even like a half hour or five, you know, uh, minutes, uh, you know, before as well, too. And for those who were impacted by the people operations uh, changes last week, if you do want to organize, self organize some of your communities, I'd be happy to also put it in the newsletter. And it could be something like we did at the start here, ever new introductions, getting to each other as a, as a support group. There's one more support uh, initiative I want to make sure I also uh, bring up, sorry. Um, the director, the Google's former director of global wellness and mental of, uh, wellness actually was also impacted early this year. And she started organizing a group of people who've been trained to actually have peer support. So you can actually um, have peer support from someone who's been trained. Again, it's, they're not professionally trained, but they've actually gone through a one hour training by uh, Google's former um, uh, person, personnel for that. Um, and I'll put the link here as well. So that if you do want to have someone to walk you through the changes that you're going through, that could be someone that you sign up for and what happens there should pair you up with someone for a one-on-one -on -one chat um, and for those which you want to uh, volunteer to provide those one-on-one -on -one chats she also has given people the opportunity to have those uh, chats as well that you can actually go and volunteer in the training in the future so i'll put that uh, in, in this message too Sorry, so it comes off as a LinkedIn as I'm pulling it off through LinkedIn. So. What else do you think we should have as a community? Any other requests, things that you that you received uh, inside Google that uh, you wish it was outside as well? Honestly, just kind of blown away by this already so i can't really say that i have feedback i'm just like whoa where did you get the time and energy and all of the things so thank you thank you thank you <laughs> yeah no worries look in a day uh, enjoy the community uh, tap into as much as you can uh, the community is here for you how much you want to use it or not use it and uh, one day when uh, you feel that you want to give back to the community those are our best uh, community leaders People who can, who's gotten something out of it and now it's time for me to give back to. So, um, yeah. Just, and if you have the request, uh, just ping us. We're happy to be helpful to you. Uh, and, yeah. But thank you for the kind words. And just throw one last thing in there too before we cut. Um, I would say that when the layoffs did happen to me, like, you know, my mind was in a tailspin, like in everything else. And I will say that one thing that helped to ground and since for me is actually giving back to this space. Volunteering definitely was a way to sort of put myself second, I would say, and actually put like other people first and really empathize with, with tons of different, you know, situations. And so it really did help even hunting for jobs even goes, you know, go smoother for me because that was not occupying all of my time during that week. And so I would say that this is also a good place to just sort of take a break from like the worrying and the stress around that and actually uh, give back to folks. And you'd actually would be surprised how those things actually do pay off at a certain point. Um, so definitely just use the space also as a way to take a retreat uh, and still help out at the same time. Yeah, and even if you're not ready to give back, just even messaging people say, hey, I'm not looking for a job right now at your company, but you seem like you work at a great company that's interesting, if you're for a chat and give the background and hey, if they say no, why not say no then, right? <laughs> but I think part of it, if you do have the time and you're making new friends, generally people are really helpful and should be helpful in, in the community as well. So um, just take advantage of those opportunities. You don't necessarily need the, the reason to reach out to any of the community members. Just say, hey, I'm a new user, I'm a new, new company member. Can I just have a chat with you? 15 minute call. Uh, yeah, perhaps do some research on the company, but it's, it's, uh, there's no time better than the present. And this week, there's a lot of events actually. So we can do a follow up for a lot of the events as well and uh, give us more feedback as uh, you attend these events and be part of your community. So, I think uh, if there's no more questions, uh, Nate and I will stay on for a little bit longer, but welcome everyone to the community. Um, for those who were impacted last week, so sorry how it's impacting you, but this is a new chapter for you and there's a lot of things to, to discover and we're here for you and uh, let us know how we can help for you in journey. Um, for those who weren't impacted, uh, 
please perhaps maybe even offer your assistance for those who are impacted and we look forward to chatting with all of you and uh, hopefully you find this Zoom community as helpful as all of this app as well. Thank you everyone. Thank you Nate again for all your help and leadership. Thank you, Chris. Being awesome. Thank you so much.